So for this video we are going to be looking at stress, elasticity, and deformation. The basic equation for axial stress is simply force divided by cross-sectional area. We write that mathematically as F is P over A, where F is our actual stress. We'll also be using a capital F as allowable stress, so those are two different things to be aware of. P represents a push or a pull. I'll use T as a tension force here. There's three different ways we can use this as analysis <clears throat> that is looking at something that exists and checking if the actual stress is less than or equal to the allowable stress. Then as design where we're basing it on an allowable stress and we size a member to carry a given load. So our equation there is the tension force divided by the allowable stress. So the third way is our capacity rating which is given a specific member element size and allowable stress, how much force can it carry? So here's an analysis example. Let's say we have a rod that's two square inches in cross section and it carries a load of 15 kips. If we divide that by our, our cross sectional area of two square inches, we get a stress of 7.5 ksi. And that's less than our allowable stress of 22 ksi, so we're okay. Next we look at a design problem. So here we're trying to find a size that is based on an allowable stress for a given load. And that allowable stress depends on the material. If we're using a mild structural steel known as ASTM A36, that's what is um, the American Society of Testing Materials identifies as a particular grade of steel. We divide our load 15 kips by 22 kips per square inch, the allowable stress, and we get a required cross-sectional area of 0.682 square inches. Now since we're sizing a tension member, the entire cross-section of the element is being used fully, so it's a matter of providing the required cross-sectional area, and the shape really doesn't matter. So for a round rod, since area of a circle is pi r squared or pi d squared over 4, we're going to say that the required diameter is the square root of 4 times the required area divided by pi. And that gives us, in this case, 0.932 inches. Uh, we normally use things in stock sizes, which are 16th or 32nd of inch in segments. If we use 1 16th inch segment, and we want to find out how many whole number of 16ths that would be, multiply our fractional 0.932 inches by 16, comes out to 14.91, so we don't have 14.91 sixteenths, we have to go to 15 sixteenths, which is a diameter of 0.938 inches, so slightly larger than our actual required diameter. So our actual stress will be lower, the actual cross-sectional area comes out to 0.69 square inches, divide 15 kips by 0.69 square inches, we get 21.7 ksi for a 15 16 inch diameter rod. Now if we use a square bar, it's actually a pretty easy calculation. We just take the square root of the area. So our height times our width is going to be the square root of 0.682 or 0.826 inches on a side. Again, if we use stock 16 inch sizes, take that 0.826 times 16, we get 13.12, round that up to 14 sixteenths, which is 7 eighths. So we can use a 7 eighths by 7 eighths inch square bar. If we do a flat plate, we would establish the thickness of the plate first, then find the required width. So we take our 5 eighths inch plate, we'll say, and that's 0.625 inches. So the required thickness of that will be the required area divided by the width and it comes out to 1.09 inches. And we multiply that by 16 to get our 1 8 inch increment. Comes out to about an eighth of an inch plus 1 inch, so that is a 5 8 inch by 1 and 1 8 inch flat plate. The third use of our basic stress equation is by rewriting the stress equation in terms of an allowable force to get a capacity rating. So here we have an allowable tension stress and a given cross-sectional area. 
let's say that we have, again, our mild steel, 22 KSI allowable tension stress. And if we have a member that has a cross-sectional area of 1.5 square inches, again, that can be any shape, just as long as the cross-sectional area is the 1.5 square inches. Multiply that by our 22 KSI, and we have an allowable tension force of, in this case, 33 kips. Now, lastly, let's look at the effects of deformation. That is, what happens when we apply a load to a member? It has internal stress, and it will stretch or shrink, depending on whether it's pushed or pulled. There are two different ways that we can look at deformation. One is on a unit length basis. This is known as strain. It is uh, designated by a lowercase Greek epsilon, and it's defined as total deformation, which is a lowercase Greek delta, divided by the initial length of the material. And the total deformation, or the total axial deformation, is given by the formula PL over AE. In this equation, P is our total load, L is the length of the member, A is the cross-sectional area, and E is the modulus of elasticity. And we can see that the deformation is directly proportional both to both the force and the length, but it's inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area and the modulus of elasticity. So if we take our first example of a rod or bar with 15 kips on it, we'll say that it's 12 feet long. And if it's made out of A36 steel, the elastic modulus for A36 steel is 29,000 kips per square inch. And we were given a 2 inch square bar for that. And we simply plug that into the equation. We say that the total deformation is 15 kips multiplied by our length, 12 feet. And we need to multiply that again by 12 inches per foot to convert to inches. Divide that by the cross-sectional area, 2 square inches. Divide that by the elastic modulus of 29,000 KSI. And we get a total deformation of 0 0.037 inches. Now the associated unit strain with that is that amount of deformation divided by the length, 12 feet long, multiply that by 12 inches per foot to get 144 inches for a unit strain of 0 0.00026 inches per inch. Note that with strain, the numbers are very, very small. And so that's some very basic ideas of simple tension, or if we have a short column, in compression, stress, and deformation. I hope that's helpful. Thank you.